Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over reactions and aqueous solutions, so make sure that you are following along in your note packets and that you fill in everything as you see. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about chemical reactions. The thing about chemistry is, and as you probably already recognized when we've been doing lots of reactions, uh, most chemical reactions happen when substances are dissolved in water. Water is one of the most common things that we use whenever we're in lab, but the thing about it is, a lot of the times the solutions that we're mixing together are actually just water mixed with other solid or formerly solid stuff. And so solutions of water in any dissolved substance is called an aqueous solution. That should sound and look familiar since we've been writing so many chemical equations. Uh, it is parentheses AQ. All right, now why is that so important? Solid, liquid, and gas, we all understood, but aqueous solutions, that got a little bit weird. So here's the thing about aqueous solutions. Whenever you dissolve something in water, uh, you are making an aqueous solution of that substance in water. So Kool-Aid, this guy right here, the Kool-Aid man, uh, is a mixture of you know sugar, citric acid, and other stuff, whatever else is in Kool-Aid, and water. That is an aqueous solution of Kool-Aid then. All right. Anything that is an aqueous solution is just just basically means that there's stuff floating around in water. All right, and we know what that stuff is for the most part. Uh, now, solubility is the way that we determine um, how much stuff will actually dissolve in a liquid. And normally, because in chemistry we're always dealing with you know sort of aqueous solutions, we're talking about water. So solubility is just a measuring tool of sorts uh, for how much stuff can actually be dissolved in a liquid. Let's talk about our two broad categories of solubility. Um, if something dissolves easily in water, it is termed soluble. And so the symbol that we use in a chemical equation to represent that something is soluble is AQ. So for example, salt, NaCl, is soluble in water. So if I added salt to water, I would now have an aqueous solution of salt. So it would be appropriate for me to put NaCl and then parentheses AQ. But there's a whole other category of things that don't dissolve easily in water, and we term those insoluble, and we don't write AQ for those. Instead, those remain solid. So, for example, PBI2, all right? So lead to iodide is a solid, and if I added that to water, it would settle to the bottom in a big chunk because it doesn't dissolve in water, all right? And so those are our two broad types of solubility, soluble substances or insoluble substances. And so we use AQ for soluble things, and we use a parentheses S for things that don't dissolve in water. So how are we going to determine that? Well, luckily, you don't have to memorize solubility rules or anything. Uh, we have this solubility chart, which you will be given whenever you need to use it. Okay, so you'll be given it on your test. That's the important thing, I guess. Uh, and so we can use the solubility chart as long as you remember your ions. Now, yes, there are a lot of ions on here that we don't actually use or know, and that's totally fine. We just don't use those. So, for example, uh, you don't need to cross these out or anything, but chlorate is something that we don't know about, so you'll never really see any chlorates in there. Hydrogen carbonate is not one of the ions we had to memorize, so you won't see any of those. We also have nitrite is something that we don't need to use, and then we have sulfite is something that we don't need to use. Uh, all of the rest of these, I think I crossed all of the ones that we don't need to know out, uh, all of the rest of these are common ions that you just need to remember. So again, it's very important if you haven't realized that you remember how to write formulas for things and how to name compounds. Now let's use this solubility chart to determine whether something is soluble or insoluble. So in your note packets, this is just, by the way, one of two different slides that you're going to be seeing. But in your note packets, you have something that kind of just looks like a whole bunch of boxes. So what I want you to do, and actually, you know what, I'll draw in the grid lines here. What I want you to do is to write down in your table uh, these different compounds. But leave yourself a little bit of space because we're going to be either categorizing them as soluble or as insoluble. So you're going to be putting either a parentheses S or a parentheses AQ. Now, if you haven't 
realized you do need a solubility chart in order to do this. So if you look on Google Classroom, there is a solubility chart for you to use. So if you haven't done that, make sure you do that because we're not going to go over all of them. We're going to check, check out um, the stuff tomorrow and see if you actually did these correctly. But make sure that you copy these down inside of the table and we'll probably do the first row just so that you can see if you're doing this correctly or not. All right, so take a look at your solubility chart. Now again, remember, you need to remember how to um, write formulas and translate those formulas into words. So I have CuNO3, so what could that be? Well, on my chart, I need to find where it says copper, okay? And I need to know, actually, that this is copper 2. On the chart, it just says that there's only copper 2. But still, I need to know that this is copper 2, and then NO3 is nitrate. So I need to find where those two intersect on my chart. And what do I see? I see that that is AQ, which means that dissolves in water. And then I can move on to my next example, FeCO3. So Fe is iron. I need to know my charge on iron, though, because my chart has two possible things, iron 2 or iron 3. And then I have CO3. CO3 is carbonate. So if you remember, carbonate has a minus 2, so that must mean that this iron has a plus 2. So I have iron 2 carbonate. All right, so if I find iron 2 carbonate, what do I see? I see that that is a solid, so it is insoluble in water. It would not form a solid. Next up, AlC2H3, O2, 3. Um, so I have aluminum, and then C2H3O2 is acetate. And so again, if I look at my, um, at my solubility chart, it's the very first thing I see right there in the corner. And so that is a solid. All right, and so see if you can fill in the rest of this chart, uh, and we'll see how you do tomorrow. Now, there is a second part to this, so if you need to pause that, feel free, because I'm going to show you the next chart next. All right, so again, I'm going to draw in the grid lines, just so that it matches kind of what you have in your notes. All right, again, copy all of these down and leave yourself some room because you're either going to be putting an S or an AQ in the proper spot. So let's do that again. All right, let's take a look at our solubility charts here. All right, so NaOH. Na is sodium, OH is hydroxide. So if I look that through, I see that is AQ. All right, it is soluble in water. Then I have KOH. All right, so K is potassium, OH is hydroxide again, and so I have A. Q for that as well. And then my last one is calcium hydroxide. So again, if I look at calcium and then I find where it says hydroxide, I'd see that is a solid. So it is insoluble. It would not dissolve in water. Okay, so just like before, make sure you fill these in and try to do the rest and we'll see how you did tomorrow.